Hello and welcome to this installment of how to print your photos, images to a desktop printer using color management via Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator or you know, whatever application, photo editing type application that you're using um, the most accurately as you can to invoke color management. So we're going to start by opening an image and Right away, we're presented with a profile mismatch dialog box. And this dialog box is just informing us that the image that I'm opening has an embedded profile that is different than my working space. So no cause for alarm. It's a pretty standard dialog box, but just understanding what your options are and what the best thing to do is important. So this image that I've opened has an embedded profile of Adobe RGB 1998. I've set my working space to sRGB. So Photoshop is giving me a warning and it's saying, what would you like to do? Well, you can use the embedded profile instead of the working space. That would be my number one choice because it's going to retain the larger gamut of Adobe RGB and it's going to retain the embedded profile. The second choice that I have is convert the document's colors to the working space. This would be an okay choice but it would degrade the potential larger color saturation or color gamut of Adobe RGB and compress it into the smaller color space of sRGB. Now, a lot of desktop printers today printing on nice photo papers do have a large gamut, and that gamut is larger than Adobe or sRGB. So you would do, be doing yourself a disservice by converting to the document's uh, colors to the working space because you'll be compressing and reducing the potential colors in your image. So the first one is the best choice. The last one, discard the embedded profile, would be a very bad choice. Because the image has been already color corrected and defined in Adobe RGB, if we throw that profile away and we assign sRGB, because that's what's going to happen. You're going to discard the embedded, but it's going to assign your working space's profile to the image which would be wrong because it was created in Adobe. A lot of people don't understand that when you discard the embedded profile, they think they're not color managed. That's a misconception. You are still color managing. It's just you are now color managing via your working spaces profile. So there's no way to get away from color management. You always have color management on, even when you discard the profile. It just means it's really, instead of don't color managers really don't give a crap because you don't care about the color. So the last one, honestly, I would say never use. Okay, so we're going to use the embedded profile. So here we have my image that's open and this is my general test image for evaluating color and we're going to print this image. So we're going to go to our Epson 9890 and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say Photoshop manages colors because in this situation we want the color conversion to happen in the driver in the Epson driver. If we had a rip then we would want the printer to manage the color and we want to turn off color management at the application level but here we're going to do Photoshop manages the color. Now I've got lots of profiles but in this case I've got my 9890 Epson Premium Luster profile that I've created as a custom media profile for that type of media and I'm going to use one of two choices relative color metric or perceptual nine times out of ten you'll probably find perceptual gives you what I consider very pleasing color and relative color metric may be just a little bit more accurate and I like relative color metric for what I call high gamut papers the luster papers the semi glosses the satins and things like that if I'm going to a matte paper or a art type paper, um, a rag or, you know, those Hannah Mill rags and things like that, then I'll use perceptual because it does a better job of rendering that shadow detail, that dark, dark region of the shadow detail because it compresses the gamut uniformly. But again, for high gamut papers, I use the relative color metric and I always turn on black point compensation. You want to set up your image in terms of how we want it to run, and that's all pretty straightforward. Then we go into our print settings. From there, we have the ability to select our options. And in this case, we need to make sure that we're using the same type of paper that was it was created for. And as we mentioned, it's the luster. So we want to make sure that we're using the ultra premium photo paper luster. We want to go to advanced. In this case, we're using photo. Okay. High speed and, and the print quality really just needs to be what was the print quality that the profile was created under. 
Um, high speed is really optional, and I generally turn it off for high quality prints. All that high speed means is you're printing either unidirectional or bidirectional. When high speed is on, the print head will lay down ink in both directions along the carriage. When high speed is turned off, it's called unidirectional and it prints ink in one direction. Then the print head comes back and it prints it again. Okay, so for highest quality, we want to say high speed off. And the next is in color management. And very important to make sure that color management is turned off. Because we're using the driver, the Epson, this profile, this custom profile, we want to make sure that we do not invoke color management again. If we did it here, it would mess things up. So we want to save that and we're done. And now all we have to do is print and we have a fantastic match of print. I hope that helps and I hope that that gets you a little closer to matching your screen to your printer. And if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a shout via our website. And that is through the colormanagement.ca or colormanagement.com down here. So again, thanks very much. Happy printing.